Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe wave motion in terms of amplitude, wavelength, frequency and period. Now some of these ideas can seem a little bit tricky at first, but I'll show you exactly what they mean and you'll see they're quite straightforward. Okay, I'm showing you here a transverse wave and we looked at these in a previous video. Now all waves have got certain key features which you've got to be able to label. We're going to start by looking at the amplitude. I'm showing you the definition of amplitude here. The amplitude of a wave is the maximum displacement of a point on a wave away from its undisturbed position. So what does that actually mean? If we look at the wave we can see a point in the center where the wave is not moving and I'm showing you that here. This part of the wave is undisturbed. The amplitude is the furthest point the wave vibrates from this undisturbed position. So this is the amplitude and also this is the amplitude. Now the amplitude is very difficult to label on a longitudinal wave. So if this comes up in your exam it's likely to be a transverse wave like this one. Okay the next key feature of waves is the wavelength so we're going to look at that now. Here's the definition. The wavelength of a wave is the distance from a point on one wave to the equivalent point on the adjacent wave. So what does that mean? Well if we take a point on one wave, for example the top, and then measure the distance to the same point on the next wave, then that's the wavelength. And I'm showing that here. Now this works for any two points on the waves. So we could also measure the wavelength at the bottom of the waves like this, or even in the middle like this. Now the wavelength has a special symbol which I'm showing you here. This is the Greek letter lambda and we'll be seeing that again in the next video. Now we can also measure the wavelength on longitudinal waves. In this case we measure from one compression to the next compression or from one rarefaction to the next rarefaction. Okay the next property of waves is the frequency. The frequency is the number of waves passing a point each second and the unit of frequency is the hertz. 1 hertz equals 1 wave per second. Now in the exam you could be asked to work out the frequency of a wave from a diagram. So let's look at that now. Here's a transverse wave with the time shown on the bottom. You can see that this represents 1 second. To work out the frequency we need to count the total number of waves. We can count 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 waves. So that means that the frequency is 5 waves per second. In other words, 5 hertz. Here's another wave and this one's got a longer wavelength. So again to work out the frequency we need to count the total number of waves. In this case we've got 1, 2 and 3 waves in 1 second. So the frequency is 3 hertz. Now the final property of waves is called the period. The period is the time in seconds for one wave to pass a point. We calculate the period using this equation. This is given to you in your exam, but the units are not given, so you need to learn them. The period in seconds equals 1 divided by the frequency in hertz. Here's a sample question for you. A wave has a frequency of 100 hertz. Calculate the period of the wave. So pause the video and try this yourself. OK, so the period is 1 divided by the frequency. The frequency is 100 hertz. Dividing 1 by 100 gives us a period of 0.01 seconds. Remember you'll find plenty of questions on the properties of waves in my Vision workbook and you can get that by clicking on the link above.